What's up? How are you? Today I want to talk to you about the difference between praise and worship. And here's why. Understanding the difference between praise and worship can bring a new depth to the way we honor the Lord. Now, throughout the Bible, the commands to praise the Lord um, are too numerous to mention. In other words, angels and the heavenly hosts are commanded to praise the Lord. Now, um, if you have your Bible or your Bible app, please turn with me to Psalms 89.5. And here's how it goes down. And it goes something like this. It says right here, and the heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints. In Psalm 103, um, 20, it reads, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. And finally, Psalm 148.2 says, Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Now, all inhabitants of the earth are instructed to praise the Lord. Psalm 138.4. Please go back to it and follow along with me. And it says something like this. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Then what we do in Romans 15, 11, here's how the Bible reads it in this way. It says, and again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, laud him, all you peoples. Now, we can praise him with singing Isaiah 12, 5 and Psalms 9, 11, with shouting Psalm 33, 1 and Psalms 98, 4, with the dance Psalm 154, and with musical instruments, 1 Chronicles 13, 8, Psalm 108.2 and 105.3.5, also of Psalms. If you haven't marked each and every one of the, the biblical Bible scriptures down of what I did not read, please, now is the time for you to do it, and you can read it as part of your homework, okay? This way you can share it with your family, your friends, or even the people on the street who don't understand God in a way um, they need to know God. Now, back to the message. Praise is the joyful recounting of all God has done for all of us. In other words, it is closely intertwined with thanksgiving as we offer back to God appreciation for his mighty works on our behalf. Now, praise is the universal and thing and can be applied to other relationships as well. We can praise our families, friends, bosses, or even paper boys for this matter. However, praise does not require anything of us. It is merely the truthful acknowledgement of the righteous acts of one another. Since God has done many wonderful deeds, he is worthy of praise. And Psalms 18.3 explains why. It says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Next. Worship, however, comes from a different place within our spirits. 
Worship ought to be reserved for God alone. So if you go to Luke 4, 8, here's how it reads in this way. It says, And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only. You shall serve. Now listen to this. Worship is the art of losing oneself in the adoration of another. Praise can be a part of worship. When worship, on the other hand, goes beyond praise. Praise is simple. Worship is not. Worship gets into the heart of who we are. In order to truly worship God, we must let go of our self-worship. We must be willing to humble ourselves before God. Surrender every part of our lives to his control and adore him for who he is, not just what he has done. Now, you have to understand that worship is a lifestyle, not just an occasional activity. You also have to understand Jesus said the Father is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23. Now in scripture, praise is usually presented as boisterous, joyful, and uninhibited. God invites praise of all kinds from creation. That is God's creation. Jesus said that if people don't praise God, Luke 1940 will say, the stones will cry out especially. When the Bible brings up worship, however, the tone changes. We read verses like, and if you go to Psalms 95, 6, they would say to you, worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. I'm sorry, it was Psalms 96, 9 that says, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Then we go to Psalms 95, 6 that says, come, let us worship and bow down. Now, often worship is coupled with the act of bowing and kneeling which shows humility and contrition. 2 Corinthians 29, 28, Hebrews 11, 21, and Revelation 19, 10. So what we're going to do is to go to one of the scriptures I talked about in that order, and then you're going to listen to what the scripture says piece by piece. Please listen very carefully to what these words say in the 29th chapter of Second Chronicles verses 28, verse 28, and it says, So all the assembly worshipped, the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. All this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Then we go to Hebrews eleven twenty-one, And please listen very carefully to what it says in the scripture. All right. It says by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, 
blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worship leaning on top of his staff. Then we go to Revelation 19.10 and please listen very carefully to what the last scripture says. And it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, See that you do not do that. I'm your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now it is through me, true worship that we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us, convict us, and comfort us. Through worship. We realign our priorities with God and acknowledge him once more as rightful as the rightful Lord of our lives. Now, just as praise is intertwined with thanksgiving, worship is intertwined with surrender. It is absolutely unlikely to worship God and anything else at the same time. If you read Luke 4, 8, and this will explain why. It says, and Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him you shall serve. That's what I have spoken to you about uh, before. Now, let's get on with this. The physical acts often associate with, with the four things. Worship, bowing, kneeling, lifting hands, they all help to create the necessary attitude of humility required for real worship. When wise worship leaders know how to structure a worship service to allow participants to both praise and worship the Lord, more often than not, services begins with joy, joyous praise songs and, trend, and the transition to the more quieter yet um, frequent introspective opportunity for worship. Now, in conclusion, worship is an attitude of the heart. A person can go through the outward motions and not be worshiping. If you read Psalms, if you if you read Psalms 51, 16, then you will know what it was, what it is talking about. And here it comes. We read, For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. Now, we go to Matthew 6, 5, 6, and listen very carefully to what it says in this way. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corner of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees 
in secret will reward you openly. Now, God sees the heart and he desires and he deserves heartfelt praise and worship. You know what? I really enjoyed spending some time with you. Um, we got together to um, know the difference between praise and worship. So, uh, and what I have learned um, in this series of messages, um, believe it or not, is um, when you praise um, God, uh, that means um, you are just, and uh, this is very serious, um, by the way. Um, what I have learned was um, when you praise God, um, you are acting very thankful unto him. Um, in, other, in other words, uh, you're just thanking God um, and honoring him in such a way um, on which um, you honor your family, your friends, your bosses, and you honor almost everybody else um, who supported you and helped you and who mentored you. Whilst with worship, on the other hand, um, you talk to Jesus and and at the same time, um, you have a passion and a longing um, for him using only your heart and only your heart. You understand? I thank you for your time. And I will be continuing on my new message um, and I, on which I will be adding to called um, The Heart of Worship. Well, be blessed, take care, and good night.